If you would help me welcome our next testimony, Sarah, she comes onto the stage. Well, I already said her name, so tell us uh, where you're from. South Dakota. All right, all right. And so you came to our conference just a few weeks ago, but I want you to tell us today, uh, how was your life before? What was life like? I know there was a lot, but what was it like for you? It's, it's hard to summarize, but basically we, we were attacked and in in not prepared spiritually for the attack, um, multiple levels. Um, I was physically attacked and then stalked and harassed, um, actually to the point that the people actually had my date of birth, social security number, so accounts were attacked. Uh, were, were attacked. Um, I was followed constantly. Um, with work, I was a human service director, and God had just put on my heart to pray for people, especially with mental illness and in, in the jails. And we were seeing people delivered. I didn't even know what that was. That's how good God is. And um, we were seeing people delivered. And then that created animosity and jealousy amongst a lot of people. So then I started getting attacked that way. And then I was asked, an uh, agency was doing something unethical, and I asked them to that I had a contract with, and I asked him to stop doing that, and then I got attacked. Uh, my character was attacked, and so it was just constant attacks. Um, before you know it, we were constantly in court, so just no safe place whatsoever. So I had fear. I had anxiety. Um, it was very toxic. It was just, and I could no longer read the word. I couldn't pray. I couldn't praise and worship, and I couldn't get in that lone time. It was just in a heightened state and just crazy. It was crazy. Man, just to have that, uh, not that to have that uh, ability to not pray, to not seek God. I mean, our life as Christians, our devotion, when that's attacked, our relationship with God is hindered because we don't feel, you know, His presence. We we don't feel that that manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and that is so tough for a believer. And so, what happened when you got to the conference? You got to the conference. You were in line. Tell us a little bit about what was going on in your mind and what. That that experience was like and I know that we have some footage of that uh, particular time as well sure um I just remember prior to that, there was a day that I just told the Lord, I said, Lord, no matter what happens, I'm going to serve you. And that's when he started, you know, things just started to shift slowly. And, and um, I was um, introduced to Hungry Jen and the virtual, um, became a virtual uh, member in Tend to Life class. And then the day of the conference, I just, I focused on Jesus. Um, as people were getting called up, I just focused on Jesus and I worshiped during the worship song, took everything out of my mind, didn't think about anything. And as they started praying and stuff, I could just feel my blood, blood boiling. And then when they came, brought me up to the line, um, you know, with Lex and line, I could hear the demons mocking, uh, mocking Ilya. And I wasn't sure if I had a demon. So by then I knew. And <laughs> I was like, okay. And just, and then wanted to leave, but I kept backing up, but kept, um, you know, the ushers kind of didn't allow that. Thank you guys. And uh, just, I could hear it not wanting to give out its name. And finally, it, it, I could hear that it was a spirit of death, but it wasn't going to say it. And so then I said, Lord, I just kept calling the Holy Spirit and calling Jesus, calling angels. And um, I just was, give me the strength to say it. And so I was able to say that. And so they casted that out. But then Jesus said, there's still one hidden. And I was like, okay, give, give Ilya wisdom, give Ilya wisdom and stuff. And so he had come back a couple of times. And um, it was kind of, it was quite stubborn, obstinate, which that's not really my personality. So it really was kind of shocking and embarrassing for me. I felt like oh my God, this isn't who I am. And so it was hard for me, but I just kept, no, I'm going to, I'm going to get delivered. And, uh, and so I just kept praying for that wisdom and it was the spirit of snakes. And when Elias said that they actually, they're like, oh shoot. <laughs> and then I vomited and I threw up. So they knew they were done. And yeah, so. Come on, glory to God. Put your hands together. That's so encouraging. If you guys remember last week, there was a young girl testifying and that was her daughter. 
And there were so many attacks in their lives. And I want you to kind of go into uh, you and your daughter just uh, walking uh, not too long ago. And you guys just coming together because this is really powerful. Because this is what happens. What she's about to explain. This is what happens when you are delivered. This is what happens when you are freed. And so I'm going to let you go a little bit into that. Sure. So, you know, throughout that night, I continued vomiting um, and stuff. And then I, I bled for like three days just profusely. But I had such a spirit of peace. I, I was experiencing what you read in the Bible. I was experiencing that peace that surpasses all understanding. And my body no longer had fluid retention. But a couple of days after that, my we were walking, my daughter walking on a trail, and she's like, I see a shadow. And it's, it's a black, it's hooded shadow. It's got a hooded black sweatshirt and black pants and stuff. And so we knew it was a, a spirit. So we rebuked it, didn't go away. So we had to do it a second time. And again, I, I could have realized, oh, I think this is the spirit of death following. So we rebuked that, casted it out. And it was gone. And then, yeah, so, and then, and then we, we also, you know, just it kind of, kind of kept trying to come back in the next couple of weeks, whether through dreams or that. And we just, we just stood the course because they knew the enemy didn't want me saved, but I knew the Lord did and I knew Jesus did. And so we just, we didn't get surprised and we, we just said, no, we are, we are delivered and this stuff has got to go. And it, and we just stood with it. You see what I'm saying? When you are delivered, when you are raised to deliver, and when you are delivered, you begin to lock arms with your children, with your spouse, with your family, and you begin to cast it out together. No longer is warfare alone. Warfare is now joined hand to hand, really combat combating the forces of the enemy. And so Sarah, just the last thing, I know every week we get up here and we ask the person doing a testimony, what would they tell you? And you might say, okay, that's so, you know, it, it, it's encouraging. Yeah, but I want you to know that there are some people who have dealt with this very issue or something similar. And I want to encourage your hope today. I want to encourage your mind and your soul today by what she's about to say. What would you say to people that are maybe going through something similar? What would you say to encourage them? You know, God is faithful. He never gives up. He met me where I was at. And I had grown up with religion and legalism, so I knew God as a as a, a harsh God, as a condemning God. And one, that is not God at all. He is so loving. He delights in you. And so if you get delivered, and if you hear any guilt, shame, or condemnation, that is not from the God. That is from the enemy. God loves you. He delights in you. And he gives you love, joy, and peace, and patience. And so I experience that since deliverance, I experience that. I don't, it's not just in the Bible. It's not just words. I experience that peace. I experience being protected in that secret place. And it's amazing. And he will do it for everyone. He will move mountains. He moved mountains for us. He will move mountains for you. And he will continue it through. And if you fail, if you fall, he will open up another door. He's not harsh. He's like, that's okay. We're just going to get another door and another chance. He met me where I was at. I gave him what I had. He took it and he just kept on going with it. He's awesome. Come on, let's give a round of applause to Sarah and your powerful testimony.